Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the digestive system and the nutrition. Goals of this lecture are uh, to describe and discuss nutrition and the related processes, various structures in the human digestive system and uh, functions of various parts of the human digestive system, few common diseases associated with the human digestive system. We start with the lecture. Nutrition. What is nutrition? Nutrition is the acquiring energy from the environment, converting this energy into the usable form uh, by the organism itself and then assimilating this energy uh, into its body for, its, uh, for performing its various functions or uh, making its own structures and then um, eliminating the remains. So, uh, the process of nutrition and digestion starts from acquiring energy. Acquiring energy from the environment is a property of living organisms. And this is one of the two major properties of living organisms that they acquire energy from the environment and then they utilize that energy for their own processes by converting it into a chemical form of energy or we can say the biochemical form of energy which is usable by the organism. There are various types of strategies uh, that organisms um, uh, assume or adopt to acquire energy from the environment. There are two major categorizations of uh, organisms as we know, the plants and the animals. Plants are the organisms that acquire energy from sunlight and make their own uh, carbohydrates uh, or we can say their own food by themselves and also produces energy from sunlight. We call them producers. That is, they can make their own food by themselves. They comes at the first level of the food chain. The animals, on the other hand, have to acquire energy by either eating plants or eating other animals. Animals sometimes also acquire energy by uh, eating up the dead organic matters, that is the dead organisms, dead living, dead plants for example, the branches of plants, the leaves of plants present on the soil um, or maybe mixed up with the soil, the old uh, dead organic matter. Uh, according to uh, their energy acquiring habit, if they are eating other uh, plants or other animals, we categorize them into different categories. We can call them consumers if they eat up um, the plants or animals. We call them decomposers. If they decompose or break up the dead organic matter. So plants, they are producers according to their uh, nutrition, according to their mode of nutrition, their uh, eating habit, or, and the animals may be consumers or the decomposers. Many of the microorganisms like bacteria are also decomposers. They also decompose or break down the dead organic matter uh, present in the soil, in water or other places. Now we talk about the various modes of nutrition in animals. There are four major categories of animals according to their modes of nutrition. Animals may be are herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and detritivores. Herbivores. Herbivores are those organisms which eat up um, other the plants. For example, goats. Uh, they eat up the uh, leaves of different uh, plants. Uh, the buffaloes, which eat up the grass, and we know that grass is also a plant. Um, the cows, which also eat up the grass and the plants. The herbivores are those animals which eat up uh, or we, which acquire their energy or their food from plants. Then comes the carnivores. Carnivores are the um, uh, organisms which acquire their energy or their food in the form of meat or proteins. We can call them sometimes flesh eaters. They eat up proteins, they eat up other animals. For example, the lion, uh, they eat the deers, they eat the monkeys, they eat other um, animals like uh, cows or buffaloes. The carnivores are those organisms, uh, hence, which eat the meat or the flesh. Then comes the omnivores. These are the third category of animals. Uh, which can eat plants and meat both, like human being, ourselves, we, we are um, omnivores. 
we eat meat, we eat uh, various plants like vegetables, we are omnivores. Crows, uh, we have seen many cows and we observe that cows also eat meat and eat the plant material and eat it also. So crows, they are also uh, omnivores like us. Then there is a category called uh, the detritivores or the decomposers. These are the um, animals or the organisms which um, eat up the dead organic matter. For example, the earthworm. Earthworm uh, lives inside the soil, in the upper layer of the soil, and it eat up the dead organic matter. Uh, break it down, um, uh, break down that dead organic matter and produces its food, takes out its food or we can say acquire its energy from that dead organic matter. So there are four modes of nutrition um, in animals. Herbivores, the carnivores, uh, the omnivores, and the detritivores. Interestingly, the animals have particular adaptations according to their mode of nutrition. As we know that flesh eaters, uh, the meat eaters, have to tear large or big pieces of meat. And meat is harder. For example, lions sometimes have to break up the bones of the prey. Uh, sometimes they have to tear bigger, larger parts of the um, flesh. Uh, the herbivores, however, have to um, take uh, the grass. For example, the cows have to eat up the grass and grass is harder to chew. They don't have to tear it, but they have to grind it hardly. So according to their mode of nutrition, animals have different types of teeth. Their dentition, we can say, is different from each other. If we observe the cats around us, or if we have a chance to go to a zoo or if we observe the National Geographic, we can observe that the cats and the lions or uh, the um, tigers, they have very large um, conical teeth. Uh, if you look at the diagram, in the second diagram, say canine. These are the specific teeth which are modified in the carnivores. These are very hard and long. These are the teeth that we have our या हम अपने अगर ज़ू में कभी लाइन देखने जाएं तो उसके हमें लंबे लंबे साइड्स पर नज़र आते हैं इनको हम के नाइन कहते हैं इनका फंक्शन ये है कि गोश्त के पीसेस को चीप हार्ड करना तोड़ना दिस इज़ द रीज़न दैट दिस लाइंस एंड द कैट्स दे डू हैव लॉन्ग के नाइन यू कैन सी एट द फर्स्ट द इंसाइज those organisms which have to cut down things like for example a rabbit if you look at a rabbit it have long incisors um, in our cartoon films we generally observe that the rabbit have two long teeth in front these are the incisors because they have to cut the carrots and they have to cut other vegetables these are the cutting teeth so rabbits because their habit is to eat the carrots or um, vegetables they have cutting teeth more advanced and the others are, we can say, less developed. Um, in the predators, the canines are more highly developed. In those organisms which, who have to chew or grind the hard uh, plants like grass in buffaloes and in horses and in cows, they have their premolars and molars highly developed. You can see in the diagram, the other two categories other than incisors and canine, the premolars and molars. The horses, the cows, the buffaloes, they have um, complicated premolars and molars. These premolars and molars have uh, wavy or curved surfaces which help these organisms to grind the hard grasses. So it means that according to the mode of nutrition, organisms have different types of teeth. There are other uh, different adaptations in organisms. Uh, mouth parts are very important according to the mode of nutrition. We know that frog for example, have a very long tongue and this tongue is inverted. That is, um, it, is attach it is attached on the base and then it goes inside out uh, because and it is sticky because uh, the, in uh, the frogs, they uh, capture the insects and to capture the insects, they need a long tongue and they need a sticky one. When they um, throw their tongue on an um, insect, it is um, it is due to because the tongue is sticky, it is attached to the tongue and they take it back. Just like that, there are various mammals which have specific types of snouts. 
you may have seen in National Geographic a pangolin. Um, pangolin is also called sometimes a scaly anteater. Uh, it have a long snout. It, as uh, the name says, ant eater. It eats up the ants. Chuntiyo ko khati hai. It have a long snout. It can insert its snout in the ant hole and open it up. And then the ants have to come out and eat, it eats upon them. You can look at uh, uh, a beautiful uh, picture of uh, a macaw, a big uh, parrot. You can see its beak is very hard and long and curved because these parrots eat upon different types of fruits and hard nuts. They have to break up the nuts. So they have very hard um, beaks. There are different types of beaks according to the food of the um, organisms. Um, we see uh, that the beak of sparrow is different. Beak of uh, a fish eater bird is very very long uh, like that of a pelican. And beak of the parrots is uh, is different. Beak of um, um, some other bird, uh, which is uh, for example a kingfisher, which have to eat fish, is very long because they have to capture fish from the water. So the mouth parts are modified according to the mode of nutrition of the organism. These mouth parts help the organism to acquire the food from the environment. Now we talk about the processes, processes of nutrition includes acquiring energy, various strategies as we talked about previously, various strategies of acquiring food by mouth parts, by behavior or uh, maybe through sunlight or something. But the organisms, particularly animals, we are more uh, concerned in this course with animals, they have to digest their food. We divide this process in a um, in few steps. We call them ingestion, taking the food in. The next step is digestion. Digestion means breaking the food into smaller parts. Then comes absorption, absorbing those smaller parts. Then comes assimilation, that is making those broken parts or uh, very, very small pieces, the digested food part of the body or convert these into energy uh, and utilizing these for various functions of the body or maybe for making different structures of the body. Then comes at the end, elimination, uh, removing the undigested parts of the food from the body. We call it elimination. So, the whole process of uh, the nutrition and digestion is ingestion, digestion, absorption, uh, assimilation and elimination. After acquiring food, that is uh, having some food in front, organism have to ingest that food, take that food inside the mouth. Then Next step comes the digestion. When the food comes inside the digestive tract of the organism, then organism have to break it into smaller pieces. We call it this process digestion. When the food is digested, broken into smaller parts, then it have to be um, absorbed by the transport system of the organism. That is the blood circulatory system. Um, it have to go or uh, absorbed by the blood through the digestive system. Then it have to be distributed throughout the body to, assimil to be assimilated. And the remaining part, uh, which is uh, not digested, which is, which is undigestible, have to be eliminated from the body. We take the example uh, of uh, the human digestive system uh, to describe and explain all of these processes. Human beings, as we know, we are the omnivores. We eat vegetables, some of us are totally vegetarian, some of us are um, mainly meat eaters but we have, we take some vegetables uh, but most of us eats both things or maybe the combination of these. We are omnivores, we can eat both. If we look at our teeth, our teeth have all the four types. We have incisors, our front teeth, we have canines, all the four on sides. Jo wo nukile wale daant hume nazar aate hai sides mein. Uh, then comes our premolar, uh, premolars and the molars, jinne hum daadhe basically kehte hain. So we have all the four kinds of teeth because we have to take all types of food. Digestive system also adapt according to the nature of the food present, um, available to an organism. Um, human being uh, is available with almost all types of foods. Uh, now we talk about the basic components of human digestive system. 
the human digestive system consists of an alimentary canal uh, which starts from mouth to anus. Uh, then it is associated with certain accessory glands, um, for example, liver, pancreas, uh, which uh, pour their some secretions inside the digestive tract to help in the digestion of the food. Uh, we start from uh, the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal uh, of human beings is a very long tube, hollow straight, uh, hollow tube, uh, which is um, when it reaches at intestine, it is highly convoluted, of course, because intestine is very long. Uh, the various parts of human digestive tube or the alimentary canal are um, the oral cavity, the pharynx, esophagus, stomach, um, intestines, small intestine and the large intestine, and the last parts, the rectum and the anus. Um, and then comes the accessory glands liver and pancreas which are associated uh, with the digestive system but they are very important part of the digestive system because they have to pour certain secretions um, which have to digest certain parts of the um, foods without them uh, we cannot digest uh, some parts of the food or we may not detoxify um, our internal um, organs now we talk about uh, these various parts of digestive tract one by one. So let's have a look on the human digestive system, its uh, diagram, then we'll go ahead. In this diagram, you can see that uh, the digestive system, um, uh, the human alimentary canal starts from mouth. Mouth is um, to ingest the food, ingest the food inside. Then comes the oral cavity. Uh, there are different parts of oral cavity. You can see that there are different types of glands associated with the oral cavity. Um, there is a submandibular gland, there is a sublingual gland, um, and uh, there are salivary glands which are associated with this, uh, this uh, oral cavity. Um, then there is the tongue is important part of the oral cavity. The teeth are the part of oral cavity. Then comes the pharynx. Uh, which is actually present on um, um, on the back side of uh, oral cavity, uh, just below the nasal cavity and above the trachea and esophagus. Then we can see a long canal um, or long tube called esophagus. Um, after esophagus, um, we can see the stomach. Esophagus actually enters inside the stomach. Then stomach enters inside the intestine, a highly convoluted small intestine, which enters into a large intestine and that large intestine as we can see ends into a rectum and an anus. Um, we also can observe in the diagram on um, the left side uh, a large organ called liver and uh, just below the liver the gallbladder, below the gallbladder is the pancreas. So this is a generalized diagram of um, the digestive system of human beings. You can see two other parts attached to the large intestine. One of these is called cecum and the other is called appendix. Appendix is um, a vestigial organ in human beings. Appendix is of no use apparently. Sometimes it gets infected and uh, by a surgery we have to remove it. Uh, but in a uh, few other organisms, appendix is very important. For example, in rabbits uh, who have to eat up the uh, vegetables, this cellulose, this um, um, cecum and appendix, these are very long structures and they have certain enzymes uh, called cellulases and certain bacteria uh, which break down the cellulose present inside the plant material. So they can digest, uh, they can acquire a lot much more energy uh, from these plant materials in comparison to the human. Now we come next, sensing the food. As we know that acquiring food is uh, itself a very important property. When we start acquiring food, first of all we sense it. We look at the food, how it looks like. Uh, is it looks good in its appearance? We smell it. Is it smells good or it smells bad? If it is, if it smells bad, we reject it. If you smell it, 
تو ہم یہ زیوم کرتے ہیں کہ کھانے میں کوئی کوئی پرابلم ہے وہ ٹھیک نہیں ہے اور ہم اس کو ریجیکٹ کر دیتے ہیں یہ بھی ہیومن بینگس کی ایک پراپرٹی ہے ایک کوالٹی ہے اسی طرح آرگنزمس اینیملس بھی اسی طرح سے اگر فوڈ میں کوئی اسمیل ہو دیکھنے میں اچھا نہ لگے تو اس کو ریجیکٹ کر دیتے ہیں سو وی لک ایٹ دا سینسری کوالٹیز آف فوڈ ایز دس از دا فرسٹ اسٹیپ آف فوڈ سلیکشن اف فوڈ لکس ام پراپر اٹ از ریجیکٹڈ اٹ از ناٹ انجسٹڈ دین کمز دا اورل کیوٹی تھرو ماؤتھ فوڈ اینٹرز ان سائڈ دا اورل کیوٹی اورل کیوٹی آلسو ہیو اٹس اون سلیکشن آر ٹنگ ہیو ٹیسٹ بڈز وین فوڈ اینٹرز ان سائڈ دا ماؤتھ وی ٹیسٹ اٹ آر ٹیسٹ بڈز فیل اٹ دیٹ واٹ از واٹ از اٹس ٹیسٹ اف اٹ ٹیسٹ بیڈ اٹ از اگین ریجیکٹڈ سو دس از انادر پارٹ آف فوڈ سلیکشن دیٹ ایون اٹ اسمیلس کوائٹ اوکے اٹ از لوکنگ اوکے بٹ اٹ از ٹیسٹ اٹس ٹیسٹ از بیڈ دین دس از اگین ریجیکٹڈ سو فوڈ سلیکشن از اے ویری امپارٹنٹ پراپرٹی آف پرٹیکولرلی دا ہیومن ڈائجسٹو سسٹم ناؤ دا سیکنڈ فنکشن آف دا اورل کیوٹی از ٹو گرائنڈ دا فوڈ وی ہیو ٹیتھ ٹو گرائنڈ دا فوڈ بیکاز دا نیکسٹ پارٹس آف دا ڈائجسٹو سسٹم دا ایلیمنٹری کینال دس فگرس اور اسٹمک اور انٹرسٹائنس نیڈ اسمالر پارٹس اینڈ فوڈ از دا فوڈ دیٹ وی ٹیک ان اور انجسٹ بائی ماؤتھ از ان لارجر پیسز ٹیتھ ہیلپ ان گرائنڈنگ آف دا فوڈ ٹیتھ گرائنڈ دا فوڈ اینڈ کنورٹ دیم ان ٹو اسمالر پیسز دین دا نیکسٹ پراپرٹی آف اورل کیوٹی اور نیکسٹ فنکشن آف اورل کیوٹی is to lubricate the food um, that is add some water and uh, salts to it um, as we know that salivary glands the submandibular glands and uh, uh, and the uh, sublingual glands all of these produces some uh, sort of mucus and uh, they also have some um, enzymes uh, for example from salivary gland amylase enzyme is released which break down the starch Uh, and the mucus released by different enzymes and different uh, uh, glands lubricate the food that is make it wet uh, so that when it goes into the next parts of the alimentary canal it do not gives any resistance to those parts then another part of the oral cavity tongue uh, tongue also have its own function tongue have to roll up uh, the food into the form of a bolus tongue roll up the food and convert them into a um, into a rough circular uh, mass which is called a bolus this bolus can then go down the esophagus um, the next part of the alimentary canal between the esophagus and the oral cavity there is another part called pharynx uh, which is present behind the oral cavity above the trachea and esophagus and below the nasal cavity uh, the pharynx um, have uh, um one important part called um because we know that esophagus and the trachea the windpipe which is going towards lung are going side by side and when food is going down from the oral cavity inside the esophagus uh body have to or organism have to make sure that this food should not enter inside the windpipe or the trachea otherwise it will be blocked um there is a small part on the back of the um, uh, oral cavity which is called epiglottis which is cartilaginous when tongue make the food convert the food in form of a bolus and throw it back then the epiglottis goes down and close the windpipe and uh, the upper part of the um, oral cavity the roof of the oral cavity goes slightly up and closes the nose so that food when it is going down towards the esophagus through pharynx cannot enter into the esophagus uh, uh, sorry cannot enter into the windpipe the trachea due to epiglottis because it is covering the trachea and it also cannot go into the nasal cavity because the upper part of oral cavity is uh, closing the uh, nasal cavity so food goes down into the esophagus so esophagus is the next part we call this process swallowing we are swallowing the uh, bolus part of food uh, if we have a look on the diagram above uh, we can see that 
there is tongue on the back of the tongue there is an extension uh, which is called epiglottis and epiglottis is just present just above the trachea um, and on the back of this trachea we have esophagus so when tongue rolls up then the roof the roof of the oral cavity goes up and block the nose so food cannot enter into the nasal cavity and this epiglottis you can see it is in um, a uh, slanting position towards upside it goes down and closes the um, uh, trachea so that food directly goes down into the esophagus here in the diagram you can see the process of uh, a bolus going down uh, bolus is um, um, shown here with the help of a yellow color you can see in the first diagram a from uh, from left side a bolus is going down in the diagram b uh it is uh, present it is passing from the um, pharynx and in this position you can see that epiglottis is closed and the nasal cavity side is also closed in the third part you can see that food is entering into the esophagus now the esophagus uh, after pharynx esophagus starts esophagus is a, a muscular tube which uh, on one side it is attached to the pharynx on the other side it is connected to the stomach um in the esophagus a uh, food is present in the form of uh, the bolus which is coming from the oral cavity the uh, muscles of the esophagus contract and relax um at specific intervals so that the bolus move uh, downwards uh, that is from oral cavity towards the stomach uh, and this happen due to the alternate contractions and relaxations of the muscles of the esophagus so esophagus is specifically designed to um, move the food down we call this move type of movement peristalsis sometimes uh, we experience um, a situation that is opposite to the peristalsis we call it anti peristalsis when we are ill uh, we are not well uh, we experience a vomiting uh, that is actually due to the anti peristaltic movements that is uh, the muscles of this uh, esophagus rather they are contracting and relaxing towards the stomach they contract and relax in an opposite direction that is from stomach towards the oral cavity the result is this that uh, food goes out of the stomach and esophagus to from the uh, from the oral cavity and out so we experience vomiting um this is the uh, function of esophagus that is by peristaltic movement transferring um food the bolus um from the oral cavity to the stomach here in the diagram uh, you can see uh, a bolus is moving down the esophagus um towards the stomach uh, one part of uh, muscles of the esophagus you can see are contracting and the other parts they are relaxing in this way this peristaltic movements they continue now we talk about the stomach stomach is a, more precisely a storage organ stomach is for the temporary storage of the food as you can see in the diagram in human beings stomach um, is continuous from esophagus and uh, on the other side it enters inside the uh, small intestine stomach have um, uh, three parts as you can see in the diagram uh, a main part called cardiac the main body of the stomach called uh, fundus and then come the third part of the stomach called pylorus um cardiac is the part in which the esophagus enters uh then the pylorus is the main uh, the fundus is the main body of the stomach and uh, then the pylorus is the lower part of stomach uh, which is enter entering inside the intestine now fun- what are the functions of the stomach uh stomach also have highly contractile walls um inside the stomach uh f- when food enters in the form of bolus um the stomach uh releases uh three major things one is mucus that is to lubricate the food further then its wall re- walls releases hcl the hydrochloric acid to acidify the food uh with the help of which microorganisms in present inside the food they are killed uh and an enzyme called pepsinogen this enzyme um when it it is uh, interacted with the hcl the hydrochloric acid released by the walls of the stomach um 
convert the inactive enzyme pepsinogen into pepsin. So, uh, HCL uh, performs dual function, number one, it kills the microorganisms in the food and it activates the inactive enzyme pepsinogen into pepsin. Pepsin is the enzyme that break down the proteins. It means that digestion of the proteins uh, starts inside the stomach. Uh, now, we know that digestion of starch is already started inside the mouth because of the mylase enzyme produced by the salivary glands. Digestion actually continues in the stomach. By the action of pepsin, proteins are broken down into uh, peptides. Uh, secondly, uh, stomach by its contractions, its strong contractions, causes mixing of the contents of the food. Food which is present inside the stomach um, is mixed up with the mucus and the HCL and the pepsinogen and the pepsin enzyme uh, due to the contraction and relaxation of the walls of the stomach. We call it churning, the churning process. Uh, that is food, food is ground further and mixed up with the enzymes HCL and the mucus. Now, one important thing. Stomach releases the HCL, the hydrochloric acid, which is a very strong acid, kills the microbes, um, help the um, uh, uh, pepsinogen and convert it into pepsin. But how the walls of stomach's, stomach itself are protected from the HCL? Uh, actually, the walls of stomach have a layer, a thick layer of mucus uh, present uh, upon them, which is secreted by the gastric cells itself. Uh, when we use the term gastric, gastric is always something related to stomach. Uh, so the cells of the stomach, uh, the walls of the stomach, it releases uh, mucus, thick mucus, which covers the layers of the, or the walls of the stomach and protect them from um, the action of hydrochloric acid. But sometimes uh, what happens that if there is a, um, abnormal condition, stomach is uh, not able to produce enough mucus or HCL is um, released in higher quantities, uh, HCL can start uh, digesting the walls of the stomach and this may lead to a very serious condition called ulceration, ulcer of the stomach. Uh, but normally, walls of the stomach are covered by very thick layers of mucus and uh, they are not affected by the hydrochloric acid. Then comes the small intestine. From the stomach, when the action of the stomach is complete, uh, then food from stomach enters into the small intestine. Uh, there are two parts of the stomach which are uh, again important to mention. We go back to the diagram. Uh, where esophagus enters the stomach and where um, stomach enters the intestine, there are two two uh, groups of muscles called sphincters uh, and at these entrances these sphincters which are ring formed muscles are closed and opened at intervals as required. So when food um, is semi digested, its proteins are digested, the digestion of stomach is complete, then food have to enter in the small intestine. But food enters by uh, the sphincter and it enters not in full but in smaller parts that is the sphincter opens and the food some part of food a bolus enters inside the small intestine and then sphincter closes again uh, then comes the small intestine small intestine itself is a very very long canal or the tube its major function is digestion and then absorption of the food Small intestine consists of three main parts, duodenum, the first part, jejunum, the second part, and ileum, the th third part. Duodenum is the first part of the intestine. Uh, duodenum, um, in duodenum, food enters from the stomach. In duodenum, uh, different types of enzymes and um, uh, secretions are entered inside the uh, first part of duodenum that help in the digestion of food. The secretions of uh, uh, liver, which are stored in the bile, uh, which are stored in the, in the form of bile in the gallbladder, they are released into the duodenum. Uh, the pancreatic juice is also released inside the duodenum and uh, uh, the bile helps in 
the digestion of lipids it causes the emulsification of lipids that is uh, it somehow attaches to the lipids and make them available for the enzyme action uh, they convert them into a form on which enzymes can attack uh, and break them down further the pancreatic juice have uh, various enzymes called trypsin uh, the pancreatic amylase and the lipase uh, trypsin is for the further uh, breaking down digestion of proteins uh, we know that protein digestion already have been started in stomach due to the action of pepsin here in the duodenum due to the action of the trypsin protein digestion further continues uh, due to the pancreatic amylase uh, digestion of carbohydrate uh, also starts and due to the lipase enzyme as we know the lipids lipase lipase action is to break down the lipids into smaller parts so the digestion um, uh, go towards completion then uh, the intestinal this part of the intestine the duodenum also releases its own juices that is its own secretions we call them intestinal juice intestinal juices also have various enzymes which break down um, the carbohydrates fats lipids the starch further uh, and convert them into more smaller parts more smaller ingredients uh, capable of uh, further action by the next part so duodenum is the part of intestine in which there is an there is a very active uh, digestion of carbohydrates fats and um, uh, proteins occur then comes the jejunum jejunum is the uh, is about 2.4 meters in length it's very very long in the jejunum uh, digestion of uh, the food continues uh, the remaining digestion which is because food already have been broken the lipids are broken down the carbohydrates are broken down the proteins are broken down into smaller pieces in jejunum uh, this process continues um, so jejunum is also mainly for digestion uh, say um, we can say that uh, this part breaks down the already broken part into further smaller pieces then comes the third part ileum ileum is uh, the last 3.5 meters of the small intestine this part is mainly meant for absorption uh, because the food is almost totally digested in the stomach by the action of uh, oral cavity first the starches by amylase then in the stomach by action of pepsin the proteins then in duodenum by the action of pancreatic juice the intestinal juice and the bile um, proteins carbohydrate fats they are all digested they are broken down into smaller pieces in ileum they are absorbed um due to this reason ileum have a very specific structure because uh, the digestive tube the alimentary canal is designed to absorb the maximum digestive material from the intestinal lumen this lumen of the ileum is highly folded you look at a diagram to understand uh, its structure look at this diagram we can see um, on the top left the small intestine a part of small intestine from ileum we can see uh, on the right a small section a very small section uh, which is uh, indicated by a black box which is actually zoomed in that is enlarged in this enlarged part we can see that the inner membrane of this um, uh, ileum is highly folded and these folds are further folded uh, you can see that there is there is a layer of muscles then there is a layer of submucosa then there is a layer of mucosa and then comes the folds and these folds are further folded that is the folds of the membrane uh, have their own folds uh, we call these own folds as villi these folds are called villi and these villi uh, you can see um, in the bottom right you can see the structure of a villus you can observe that uh, it is an extension of the membrane in which blood vessels are running and in between the blood vessels there is um, a small tube a blunt uh, a blind tube going up um we uh, we we can we call this uh, blind tube just inside a lacteal um around the lacteal there are uh, there is an artery towards one side and on the uh, in red color 
and on the other side in blue color there is a vein. Uh, if we look at the epithelial cell from this villus um, as uh, indicated by the small black box and enlarge it, we can see that all the cells of the villi even have extensions of their membranes towards the lumen. We call them microvilli. It means that every cell of the epithelium, uh, in this case we actually call them endothelium because these are present towards the lumen. Each cell of the endothelium itself have an extended membrane. We call them microvilli. You can see three cells. Uh, all of these, uh, their, vis their nuclei are visible and their microvilli are visible. Why all of these foldings are present? Because intestine, ileum, this part of intestine, the ileum, have to absorb the maximum digested material from the lumen of the intestine. And they can do so by increase, excessive increase in the surface area. Due to all of these foldings, you can see that surface area of for digestion, uh, actually, um, we can say the area which is in contact with the uh, food passing, digested food passing through the lumen is highly increased due to these foldings. So that this part of ileum is very, very efficient in absorbing the maximum digested food from um, which is passing from the lumen of the intestine. Uh, so this folding um, in the form of uh, folds of the wall of intestine and then uh, the foldings of this wall in further uh, smaller parts, the villi, and the foldings of the epithelial cells of the villi themselves in the form of microvilli increases the surface area to uh, several hundred folds. And the result is very, very efficient absorption. Uh, we can see in this next diagram a more closer look on the villus, which shows a lacteal inside. Uh, two um, uh, vessels, one is in red color is an artery and the other on the, in the blue color is a vein um, because you know that uh, uh, this epithelial lining of the um, uh, villus is single celled. You can observe in the diagram that the epithelium of this villus is only one cell thick. So the materials can easily, the digested materials can easily pass through this single celled uh, um, villus and absorbed by the capillaries which are very very close uh, by these arteries and the capillaries which are very very close present in close vicinity with the epithelium. Broken carbohydrates and proteins are digested by uh, this way by the arteries and uh, the capillaries but the fats and glycerols these are absorbed by this inner part which is running uh, in the center the lacteal. Lacteal absorbs the um, fats and the glycerol and you can see down there that lacteal is going down into a third vessel and it is not going to the arteries and the veins. Actually lacteal is going towards the lymphatic system. Lacteal brings the fatty acids and glycerols in the lymphatic system of the body uh, which actually stores these fats at various places inside the body according to the um, mostly uh, the genetic uh, setup of the person that in which area of the body these fats will be located and if the fats are required by the blood then the lymphatic system returns these fats um, to the blood. But the proteins, the broken, um, the, the digested proteins and uh, the carbohydrates they are absorbed by the capillaries from the villi and then um, these um, uh, digested fats and these digested uh, proteins and carbohydrates are uh, moved towards the liver. And in liver, liver is a very important organ in this context because liver um, removes all those toxic materials, uh, the waste materials from um, these, semi, these digested um, uh, food particles, smaller particles and make it clear. And then through the liver, through the hepatic portal vein, these nutrients are uh, moved towards the heart. And heart then distribute these um, nutrients, digested nutrients through the blood um, towards the whole body parts. Uh, so this is how 
uh, digest uh, the carbohydrates and proteins they move um, they are digested in the intestine they are absorbed by the um, uh, ileum and they are um, they move towards the uh, blood circulatory system then they go towards the liver where they are cleared up their toxins and their larger particles they are removed by the liver and then they are moved towards the uh, they are sent towards the heart which distribute them in throughout the body um, then comes the undigested part what happened to the undigested which is not digested um, the next part is large intestine the undigested food moves towards the large intestine uh, large intestine um, is uh, actually uh, the last part of this elementary canal uh, in the large intestine there are also a lot many folds but this is not as folded as highly folded as the small intestine uh, in the large intestine uh, the food moves down and the large intestine actually the cells of the large intestine absorbs water from the undigested food so the that water is actually returned back to the body and the remaining part um, is uh, kept as a semi solid material we call this semi solid material as feces these feces are then uh, moved down and they are stored inside the rectum for a specific time when the rectum is uh, full then uh, the rectum sends a reflex to the nervous system called a defecation reflex and uh, then uh, these feces are eliminated now there are two related problems of intestinal motility particularly related to the large intestine and uh, we normally experience these problems uh, diarrhea and constipation now we know that function of large intestine is the absorption of water from the food if the motility in the large intestine is uh, increased that is it is uh, uh, contracting and relaxation with a more speed then the result is diarrhea that is when the food is passing with a with the more than a normal speed intestine cannot absorb enough water from that uh, that undigested food and the result is a diarrheic diarrheic situation that is the loose feces have more water the other situation on the other hand is the constipation what happen that there is a decreased motility of uh, food through the intestine when food is moving through the large intestine slowly then large intestine absorbs more water more than normal water uh, from that food the result is constipation more harder feces in comparison to uh, the normal ones both uh, conditions could be uh, treated easily there are many fact there are many uh, medicines and there are many natural um, uh, uh, ways uh, we can say there are certain foods with the help of those we can normalize the um, intestinal motility the other disorder we already talked about it this is the of the digestive tract is the stomach the ulcer ulcer could be um, produced at any part of the uh, digestive tract but mainly uh, these are the uh, ulcers are uh, produced in the stomach due to the action of um, sometimes uh, hydrochloric acid on the walls of the stomach an ulcer is uh, produced that is actually an injury uh, injured part of stomach is produced sometimes it may occur in the esophagus or in some other part of intestine sometimes um, in the stomach um, there is an infection by a bacterium called helicobacter pylori this bacterium also can cause the ulcers for stomach though the ulcers are uh, treatable but uh, there are two ways to treat them number one to take medicines to reduce the acidity and the other is to um, we can say the preventive medicine that is don't take very spicy foods foods with the, which um, causes more acid acid release from the stomach uh, and so on so uh, this is about uh, digestive system we talked about um, the nutrition different modes of nutrition in animals um, the digestive uh, various uh, structures present inside the digestive system of human beings and their functions and few very common uh, diseases of the digestive system um i hope you understand what we talked about um we'll uh, meet in the next lecture thank you